I've been watching Gilmore Girls since I was in junior high and I love recreating homemade recipes inspired by the food they make on the show. So in today's video, I'm making pumpkin pancakes with cinnamon butter, Suki's butternut squash soup recipe, and semi-homemade Fiesta burgers that were so delicious. I'm gonna be sharing the recipe so you can also eat like a Gilmore Girl for a day. So let's go ahead and get started. The Gilmore Girls are always having breakfast at Luke's and I recently saw an episode where Luke came to the table all excited because he made pumpkin pancakes with homemade cinnamon butter. I'm making pumpkin pancakes and it comes with homemade cinnamon butter. You make cinnamon butter. So naturally we've got to make some pumpkin pancakes to start the day and homemade cinnamon butter. I'm going to make a vegan version so you don't need to have any eggs or dairy or anything at all to eat like a Gilmore girl. We're going to start by mixing the dry ingredients, which is all purpose flour, baking powder, cinnamon, and nutmeg. All the ingredients and measurements are going to be in the description box below. I sift that in with some salt and I whisk this all together. For the wet ingredients, I'm gonna to mix together some pumpkin puree, and I'm gonna add that to a mixing bowl with some plant milk. And I like to use one that has a bit of protein in it, like a soy milk or a pea milk, because it helps to give the pancakes a nice structure and some fluffiness. Then I'm gonna add vanilla, maple, and melted vegan butter, and mix the wet ingredients in with the dry ingredients. Then I'm gonna set a pan to medium heat. You wanna make sure that you don't have the heat too high, but you do wanna make sure that the pan is warm before you add the pancake batter. That's actually pretty important. And you'll know that they're ready to flip when you see lots of bubbles on the surface and the edges kind of set up a little bit. They kind of dry out a little. And this is an indicator that the pancakes are cooking all the way through, that they are gonna be golden brown on the opposite side and fluffy in the center. So that's why medium heat is important. If the heat is too high, the outside will burn before the inside really has time to cook. For the cinnamon butter, we're gonna go ahead and mix some softened vegan butter with salt, cinnamon, and maple, and I just use a hand mixer to make this really light and fluffy. When I heard that Luke was putting cinnamon butter on already cinnamony pumpkin pancakes, I thought it sounded good, but also a little unnecessary. No, the cinnamon maple butter on top of these pancakes makes them especially delicious. I'm gonna be quiet now for the syrup pour because this is amazing. Nothing goes better with a stack of fluffy pumpkin pancakes than a hot cup of coffee. So of course I got my coffee in my Luke's mug. I actually topped my pancakes with a little bit of cinnamon butter, a little bit of almond butter too, just to make it a little more hearty and filling and some maple syrup. And this was so good. Cinnamony, gingery, nutmeggy, heaven. So I'm gonna be working on my blog for most of the day today. My blog is called NikkiVegan.com and that's where a lot of my recipes are. And so today I'm gonna to be shooting two different recipe photos. And I like to do that earlier in the day while I still have some good light. Although it's pretty dark today. It's been raining a lot in New Jersey for the last like three days. It's been pretty much just rain the whole time. So it has been dark, but I actually think that overcast lighting as long as it's bright enough can be really pretty for food photography. So I'm gonna do that for the beginning part of the day. And then after that, in the afternoon, I'm gonna be putting the blog post together, writing the recipes, putting all the tags and the links and all that stuff together and editing the photos. So that's gonna be most of what I do today, but I am gonna be in comfy clothes for the remainder of the day. So I have no intentions of changing. I did get myself ready though, and I was putting on my deodorant this morning and I wanted to show you guys this scent. This is the cucumber and mint scent. And this is the very first native deodorant scent that I ever used. It was actually given to me as a gift from a friend who was telling me how good this deodorant was. She was like, I'm just gonna give it to you so that you can try it. And this was the scent. So as soon as I smell this, it just takes me right back. It's also a very nostalgic scent because it reminds me of a body splash that I used to love when I was a kid. They're offering my viewers 33% off if you use my link and code. Also this lilac and white tea scent smells so good. It's floral and very clean and fresh. I actually have the deodorant and the body wash both in this scent and I love pairing them together. So if I use that in the shower, I will use this after the shower. But this also is very nostalgic for me. This scent smells exactly like this candle that my friend got me when I was moving into a very teeny tiny apartment in Hollywood when I was 23. And that was just a really happy time in my life. And every time I smell this, 
deodorant, it takes me right back to that candle, that apartment, that time in my life, and it's just like a happy scent. So I absolutely love this. This one though, the Lavender Rose, is the one that I use probably the most often out of all of them. It is a very clean but relaxing floral scent. The lavender just smells like a lot of my favorite bath products and so especially if I've taken one of those everything showers or a really good relaxing bubble bath, this is what I like to put on afterwards. And what's great is the texture is very smooth. It's dry to the touch, it doesn't feel sticky and I just love the way it smells. It's just a beautiful, calming floral scent. So these are some of my favorites. I love that they're plastic free and Native is offering my viewers 33% off of the starter kit. So normally a three pack would cost you $39, but with this link and code, you can get 33% off and you can get all three for just $27. So I really hope you guys will take advantage of that discount. Let me know what scents you end up getting and I will see you guys at lunchtime. I just got done filming some pictures from my blog. This is for a butternut squash soup recipe. And by the time you're watching this video, it will be up and you can make this recipe along with me. I will link it down in the description box below. I made this butternut squash soup because of the Grace Bridge dinner. And in my research for this video, I realized that I've been calling it the Grace Bridge dinner in my mind. It's the Brace Bridge dinner and it's in this episode where they were supposed to have a big event at the inn. It got canceled and so they invited all of their friends from Stars Hollow to have a big dinner party. And one of the things they made was a butternut squash soup. And I remember there's a scene where Luke and Jess are talking about it and they're picking off the garnish and figuring out whether or not they should eat it or put it to the side. And they didn't seem so happy about the butternut squash soup, but I love butternut squash soup, especially making it from scratch. It's pretty easy to do. It's kind of a sheet pan recipe actually. So you can pop everything in the oven and then blend it with some broth and you've got a really delicious homemade soup. I actually made it yesterday. So I'll go ahead and show you that recipe and then I will talk about how to serve it because there's one thing that's actually pretty important. The star of the show is obviously butternut squash and I always like to look for one that is a little bit more narrow in the center like this. I find that it's so much easier to cut and get your knife through because you can just go right through the center of that part and it's not as big as some of the other uh, sizes that you can also find at the market. So that's my preference just to keep things easy. I'm going to cut each squash into about eight wedges. You want them to be about the same size and to remove the seeds I just kind of anchor the squash in the palm of my hand and then I use a spoon to scrape out the seeds and the pulp like this. I'm gonna repeat the process with the remaining squash and then I'm gonna put all of these butternut squash wedges on a baking tray and drizzle a little olive oil, maple syrup, and just some salt. Roasting the squash is going to really bring out the flavor and it's one of the things that makes this soup recipe taste like it's just been simmering on the stove for a long time. After about 40 minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and add another tray to the oven that has some onions, apples, and garlic. I just do the whole clove of garlic. I don't even peel it. I just put it on the pan, pop that in the oven, and that's gonna caramelize and become really flavorful. And when all of your veggies are roasted, you're just going to peel the squash and add the squash, apples, onions, and roasted garlic to a blender along with some veggie broth. I actually like to use this vegan, not chicken broth. It's really, really flavorful and it's my go to for soups and also gravies and everything. I love it. Finally, we're going to add some spices. We've got nutmeg, ginger, ground sage, paprika, and salt and pepper. This is going to make this soup taste so good. And then one of the secrets is just two teaspoons. You don't need a lot, but just two teaspoons of olive oil. That is going to really emulsify while the veggies are blending with the broth and it makes the silkiest texture. Then all that's left to do is heat it up in a pan. This helps to bring the spices to life and the result is an intensely flavorful butternut squash soup that is silky smooth, perfect for the fall, and I think Suki would be proud of this. So here's the part that's pretty important. It's actually finishing it with lemon. You don't wanna put lemon in while you're actually cooking it. You wanna put it into the bowl and squeeze lemon on top as the finishing touch. It literally changes everything. It brightens all the spices. It sharpens, obviously, because it's got some acidity, it kind of sharpens and brightens the flavor. And I think it's a completely different soup when you finish it with a little bit of lemon. I don't recommend putting the lemon in the actual soup while you're cooking it because it will kind of cook out and it actually changes the flavor a little bit it loses that sharp bright fresh flavor and it becomes more of a background sort of vinegary acidity it's 
much better when you serve it just fresh right before you eat it and you kind of stir it in at the last minute. So I just got done taking some pictures for the blog. So I just microwaved this right now and I'm going to go ahead now and finish it with a good squeeze of lemon. It changes everything. It is so good. It doesn't seem like butternut squash and lemon go together because it's like a roasted soup and it's fall and you've got the sage and you've got, you know, like the warming spices like nutmeg. But actually the lemon just kind of freshens it and makes it a little bit different, I think, especially because we're roasting the vegetables. We've got caramelized apples and onions and roasted garlic. All of that just really benefits from a little bit of zing, I think. So if you make this recipe, don't skip the lemon. I really think you guys will love it. And I don't know, I feel like Jess and Luke would probably approve of this one. Maybe. Oh, by the way, comment below and let me know if your team, Dean, Jess, or Logan. One of the things I love about Gilmore Girls and specifically about Lorelei is that if something could be made more fun, it's gonna be made more fun. If something could be over the top, extra, next level, she's gonna do that every single time. And they have some pretty epic TV snacks when they're watching TV. If you look at the coffee table and basically every single episode, there's always like a spread of really awesome snack options. And popcorn is almost always on the table. So normally I would have popcorn and like a crisp, very, very cold sparkling water if I was gonna watch TV and I wanted to have a, a snack with it. That pairing in and of itself is always great. But because it's a Gilmore Girls Day, I'm gonna try to up the ante a little bit and make it even more special by making a bit of a snack mix. And my favorite popcorn snack mixes are usually popcorn as the base, then add some pretzels for extra crunch and saltiness and just a different texture. And then I love adding some kind of seasoned roasted nuts. Like these cashews from Karma are so good. They're coconut and normally I'm not a coconut person really, but these are so good. They've got like a um, kind of a cookie quality to them and they're really good on their own, but they're really good in a snack mix with like some chocolate chips and crispy salty things. It's just really, really tasty. If you're more of a savory person though, this one is also really good. It's like a rosemary sea salt, also good on its own, but very, very good in a popcorn snack mix. And I do both of those all the time. I don't have any of that stuff today. So what I do have is my Griff popcorn and I have raw cashews. I do have a recipe for chili lime cashews on my blog. I'll link that in the description box below. So I think I'm gonna do something like that, maybe like a maple cayenne or something. Get those really nice and kind of glazed and crispy, crunchy, and then toss that together with the popcorn and make my own little snack mix using what I have. I feel like Lorelai would approve of that. So I'm gonna do that and show you how I make it. For dinner tonight, we're gonna make Fiesta burgers and this is really more assembling than cooking. So I feel like of everything I've had today, this is the meal that Lorelai would probably actually make herself, especially if Rory was helping her. This is very doable because it's semi-homemade. And if she was in her Max era, then I think she would really like this meal because it would remind her of her first date with Max, which is when they got stuck in a snowstorm and they went to grab burgers and then went to the movies. And right next to the ordering window, there was a menu on the side and at the very top, it's fiesta burgers and that's what max got and if you remember it was quite spicy so we're gonna make a vegan version of that for dinner i'm also gonna put a salad on the side which i know lorelei probably wouldn't like i know how she feels about lettuce and lettuce essence so we're gonna we're gonna downplay that but rory likes a salad so we're gonna have a little salad on the side too for the Fiesta burgers, I'm gonna be using these Dr. Prager Perfect Burgers. They're really hearty and filling and they're super easy to make because you just pop them in the air fryer. You can also do this in the oven or on the stove top, but the air fryer method is easy. It's just five minutes and then you flip them over and cook them for six minutes. So while those were cooking, I went ahead and I made my favorite champagne vinaigrette recipe, which I will put in the description box below. You just combine some champagne vinegar, olive oil, Dijon mustard, and then I use either oregano or Italian herbs herbs, some garlic powder, salt, a little maple for balance, and then some fresh lemon juice. And you mix this all together in a jar and it is so, so bright and delicious. And it's really versatile as well. But the reason I wanted to make it on this night was because I knew I wanted to use some apples to make kind of like a crunchy fall salad. So I've got some thinly sliced onion and some thinly sliced 
uh, what kind of apple is this? It's a Honeycrisp apple. And I put a little bit of the salad dressing on just this part first and toss it together and it like marinates the onions and the apples and kind of pickles them a little bit, which is so good. Then I add my greens and I divided this between two plates and on Nicholas's, I put some of those candied cashews that I made. I ate way too many at snack time, so I was kind of over them already at this point, but putting them on this salad was a really good choice because they work so well with the other ingredients. For the Fiesta burgers, instead of actually just doing ketchup on a burger, I thought it'd be fun to try red enchilada sauce. So I did a little bit of that on the bun, and then we did some cheese on top of the burgers. This is the vegan cheese that I used, and I melted it for one minute on top of the burgers to make it nice and melty. Then I topped it with guacamole, that's gotta be on a Fiesta burger, and then some onions and tomatoes. And this was even better than I expected it to be. My boyfriend loved it. This is his plate, I made him too, and I actually added a little bit more kick to his by adding some Cholula. He loves spicy food. And I remember from the episode that Max's burger was rather spicy, and this was also very delicious. 10 out of 10 recommend. These are so easy. It's a great semi-homemade recipe, but it really is just like hearty and satisfying and flavorful. We didn't watch Gilmore Girls for dinner, but we did watch one of my other favorite shows, Only Murderers in the Building. We've only got one episode left, so we are savoring it, but that was that was dinner. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed, and I will see you in a video very soon. Bye.